Hey, my community, Jeff back again just to show a couple quick things I picked up the other day at my local store. And, uh, you know, you learn a lesson. You learn lessons as you go. And um, at least we hope we learn lessons. So a little lesson I learned on, uh, you know, I guess it's good to do research. Not so much always impulse buys, which I tend to do. Um, anyway, went to my local store. Figured we'd swing by and check out something I felt like I was... Uh, Wanted to support local business, and we were down there by the shop, and I'm like, well, let's go by there. I actually went in the store, because I, I think in, in a recent video, I was talking about prioritizing and um, how I buy. And I'm like, you know, I don't buy. There's a lot of records that have come out recently that I haven't bought yet that I want that are big names. And, I, you know, I wait for them to hopefully price drop, and I thought, well, maybe I'll swing by. You know, support local business, pick up something new. I went in there with the intent of getting, you know, either Ace Fairly or the new Bruce Dickinson or uh, Judas Priest or, I mean, I don't even have the KK Priest album. You know, I thought I'd pick up something that was, you know, within a couple months old, if not a couple weeks old. Uh, the new Saxon, you know, I was, I'll, I'll go and I'll buy some. But then I walked in and I look at the used stuff and immediately caught my eye uh, on something that ended up diverting me from buying anything new but then i did take a look around and the only new thing they had there which was surprising was they did have the new ace fairly but they didn't have the saxon or the the other ones so anyway um first thing that caught my eye and i thought well i'll, I'll buy that and and i had something else in mind in the use section i want to get and then something else caught my eye, my eye but i picked up except breaker this was just sitting right on the front when i walked in boom caught my eye and I don't know if you remember when I did my Accept Collection video a while back. This is the only early album by them that I didn't have. So this is definitely a whole filler that fills in the catalog for the early Udo years. Um, I have uh, one of the other holes I had to fill was uh, uh, Blood of Nations, which I did pick up a couple weeks ago. I don't think I showed that, but I, I had picked up a copy of that. So really, when I look at my collection now of Accept, the only thing I'm missing, aside from some live albums, because there have been quite a few live albums in the past years, past couple years too, like the, you know, the box set that they did recently and all that. But uh, the uh, Chaos album from, well, the last album they did, um, album before the last album, is the only one I don't have currently on vinyl. And of course, they have a new album that's dropping soon. But uh, and like I said, aside from some of the live albums, so this. And, and, and the Blood of Nations, which I picked up a couple weeks ago, uh, I think my Accept Collection is 99% complete, like I say, aside from this album the before last. And, um, you know, and that's on my wish list, and it's not too expensive, so I'm sure I will get it eventually. So that was really cool. So that's why I said, oh, I'm going to grab that. I mean, it was in, it was in great condition, um, you know. And I know there's a bunch of different color variants. I guess there's a color, there's a variant of this where her dress is purple and her lipstick is, it's just more a tint thing or where they're playing with the, uh, the, the hue. I assume they, you know, cause I, I was reading it, it says, you know, dress is a little more purple, uh, lipstick's not as red, et cetera, et cetera. But then what caught my eye as I'm going down the alphabetic order, I notice the Iron Maiden section is huge huge they have a decent amount usually there but it was two full bins i'm like what the heck so i got down there and started flipping and i don't know the owner guy wasn't there i didn't get to talk to him it was just uh one of the girls behind the desk maybe she knew maybe she didn't but it was overflowing with like bootleggy type stuff concerts picture discs singles concerts concerts just a flood of stuff i mean i knew there was a lot of stuff out there and a lot of stuff gets put out there but i don't keep up with all of the different bootleg stuff same thing with kiss you know huge kiss fan and i see stuff all the time online and stuff and i'm just like and there are a lot of people who are really into that who are like oh yeah that's the show and from so and so it was recorded with this you know audience recording blah blah sadly i don't know about that stuff as much don't keep up with that iron maiden has got a buttload of stuff kiss has a buttload there's just some bands that have you know it's like they're the grateful dead of live stuff too they just everything gets released 
out there. And so there was so much stuff. And a lot of times you buy them based on the artwork because it looks cool. And there was just a lot of good stuff. And I was surprised because it wasn't super expensive. A lot of times you'll find those those different bootleg and like a two record set's going to cost you 70 bucks. Most everything in this section was, you know, in the $30 range. Um, they did have some stuff that was up in price that I guess was a little more rare. There were some things that had some Japanese stuff on it, which probably is obviously going to raise the price. But for the most part, I'm like, wow. I mean, I, I had a hard time not picking up a couple hundred bucks worth of stuff. But here's the thing. Again, I don't know a lot about what it is I'm buying without doing the research. So I bought one thing and I bought it sight unseen without doing research. Um, I let one thing lead me astray. Um, not a huge deal, but I was like, oh, that's interesting. And then I got home and did some research and found out, well, that's not really interesting at all. So I don't even know where this is. It's in the Netherlands, but Legacy of Arnhem. I bought this solely because it was in this cool uh, canvasy type sleeve. It's a tri. It's a three record set. It's a trifold. It opens up. There's nothing inside. No pictures. Each album, it's like one's red, one's white, one's blue. So it's three. Uh, and they're in white sleeves too. I, I'm not gonna pull them out. It, you know what red, white, and blue is, right? You know what? You know what those colors are, right? I'll show you one. Um, I mean solid. You know, first album is solid red. Labels are, and that's not even. Yeah, that's a kind of a flat red. Labels are just very basic, one, two. So um, no artwork or anything, but the cover being in this cool case was why I gravitated towards this. Now, it's a 2018 concert, which I saw that tour. So I'm like, I probably, probably would have been better off or more interested in buying something. They had a lot of stuff from the uh, early years, you know, the early killers and stuff like that. I should have probably bought something from those years because this stuff is common. And again, I saw the concert, um, but it looked cool. And then I looked at the back and it says there's only 145 of these made. So the limited quantity was kind of cool. 145 copies. Now, uh, there are three versions, it says. Numbers 1 through 15 are a test pressing edition. And then numbers 16 through 95 are a leather edition, which is technically this. It's not leather. I guess they expect it to be leather, but it's not leather. And then 96 through 145 is a velvet edition. And I guess, I don't know, that, that's obviously probably a little fuzzier feeling. So it wasn't until I got home and I saw the pictures of the different editions. So test press edition has a different cover. Um... The uh, this this is the orange edition people call it. It's not really leather. It's the orange edition. Um, it has this the uh, Icarus thing on it, and then the other edition has a big Eddie head with the horns uh, for the third edition. And they all come in different colors. There are all all kinds of different colors. Uh, I mean, there's different colors uh, for each set. Now the thing that kind of initially threw me. And this is where I probably could have stopped and done the research and probably was thinking way too much as it says 145 numbered copies your copy i don't know if you can see it your copy number one now again i didn't know anything about this release maybe this was a test pressing i didn't know those different covers uh the, the labels look like they're generic i mean that does that not look like that could be somewhat of a test pressing for a bootleg so I thought, huh, do I, is this one of the first 15 test pressings? So anyway, that kind of influenced my buy, but it was already being influenced because I thought the packaging was cool. I saw this, this was in there in this bag. I, you know, I did not look at it. It is very hard to see, little holographic sticker. I did not look at it until I got home. So I got home and started researching this, looking at it on Discogs, and it turned out every copy says you're number one. They're supposed to have written a number beside it, one, whatever. Um, so yeah. This is not number one, and turns out this little sticker, which is why whoever sold this preserved it in a little bag, it says that I'm number 87 of 145. This was too hard to see in the store in the dark, and so I did not look at it. So I am number 87. It is one of the orange leather editions. Now, I mean, I'm not complaining. It was really, for a three-record set, way cheaper than I expected, way cheaper. 
Um, it was not expensive at all, which is another reason I bought it. For three records, it was a really good deal. And so I said, okay, I'll buy that. It was just, you know, it, it didn't put me much out of pocket more than I thought buying the, you know, buying the new Ace Frehley album might have. A little bit more, but not a ton more. So I bought it, and then I got home anyway. So I listened to it, and it's it's an audience shot, audience recording. Um, doesn't sound horrible, but it sounds like an audience recording. From the standpoint of everything sounds reverby, it sounds in the distant. You can hear some people talking around them. The thing that's really irritating is the first song is the pre-intro, Doctor Doctor. Why they couldn't have trimmed that off? You 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 hear the music playing over the intercom, you know, of the whole song "Doctor Doctor" by UFO. Then they kicks into the intro of Char Churchill. You, you couldn't trim that off and save from wasting an entire song. But then from there, it was just you know, it sounded like you were at a concert. This concert's over there in the distance. The reverb is there. Uh, it kind of sounds echoey, and like I said, you can hear people talking around them a lot, a little. Again, not horrible, but you'd have to turn it up pretty loud. To, to It, it kind of just seems like it's distant, um, farther away. So, yeah, you know, that's why I don't like bootlegs, because that's not the kind of stuff I'm going to revisit or, 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 or listen to a lot. So I'm pretty sure I'm probably, I may list this and find somebody who's a big Iron Maiden fan and maybe resell it, because like I said, the price was phenomenal. So I think I could get my money back and pass the deal on to somebody who would really enjoy this it's a collector's item it's kind of neat 145 of them made so i mean i could keep it for that standpoint um but again there's nothing super fancy about it uh it's just neat it's just neat and there but there were so many things there and you know and i, I i'm sure i'm going to come out of there with more because every time i go back there if that bin still looks like that i'm going to say yeah one more so i'll probably start taking more chances because i'm not going to have time to research those but i think i'm going to focus a lot on the early years the uh the early 80s, the early Bruce years, you know, the, the late Paul Diano years, um, some of that stuff. Because I think that stuff would be a little more, you know, fun to have. This stuff, kind of a dime a dozen. You can get pretty much any concert nowadays from the later Bruce Dickinson years, these past 10 years. So much of that stuff is getting pumped out there. Anyway, that's it. Just a little caution to, you know, do your due diligence as far as doing some research if you're not willing to buy stuff that you may not be as satisfied with. So, lesson learned, hopefully, but doubtfully. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thanks a lot for watching. Rock on and rock hard.